Hi, I'm April and welcome to my video series Made with MRTK, where I make cool stuff with the Mixed Reality Toolkit and show you how I did it. For this video series, I am using the spatial awareness system. Essentially, I want to make my holograms interact with the real world as though they are real themselves, thus making them spatially aware. Therefore, I should be able to take a holographic cube, for example, and sit it on a flat surface in the real world or even take a holographic sphere and have it roll on my real life floor. This is the first of seven videos within this series. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Unity environment for Windows Mixed Reality development. And we'll also preview a Microsoft Learn module that I authored that actually walks through these same exact steps. Ready to get started? Let's go. So here's the Microsoft Learn module that I mentioned that I authored. You can access this by going to aka.ms slash learn dash MRTK. The title of this module is set up a mixed reality project in Unity with the mixed reality toolkit. This module was written to help with setting up your Unity environment for Windows mixed reality development. And it also provides a nice introduction to the mixed reality toolkit. Here within the module, I have listed prerequisites that are needed to get started. And in addition to that, there's also some exercises in here as well. I do have a call out in the prerequisites for tools that need to be installed. That link is going to take you to the install the tools page that we have on docs.microsoft.com. Listed on this page is what you need to get started. You will need to download and install these particular tools. The first is going to be Windows 10. The second is going to be Visual Studio 2019, and that's going to be 16.2 or higher. And then finally, you're also going to need the Windows 10 SDK. I do believe if, if you click that button, it will automatically download. One thing that's going to be optional here is the HoloLens 2 emulator as well as a HoloLens 1 emulator. The reason being is that there's also an in-editor simulator as well that you can use if you're utilizing Unity. However, for what we're going to show today, I'm going to do everything in my HoloLens in real life. Okay, so from here, let's hop over to Unity and get started. So here in Unity, in the Projects tab, I'm going to come to New, click the drop down, and select this uh, version of Unity. That's going to be 2019.4.11f1. What you'll want to do here is ensure that you're using a version of Unity that's going to be compatible with the version of the Mixed Reality Toolkit that you're going to later import and use. Once I click that here, the template that I'm using is going to be 3D. And the project name, since this is going to be a demo, I will call it Spatial Awareness. Ah, I can't type Spatial Awareness. I like to put a little underscore, there we go. And then I'm gonna save this to my desktop. I know I have here that it was somewhere else, but for ease of use, we'll put it in my desktop. Select folder, and then we're going to create. So now that Unity has created the project, do be aware that your version may look different than mine. I'm gonna expand the screen here. I'm gonna move some of the panels over so we have more real estate on the left side of the screen. So first and foremost, we need to modify some settings in here. As I mentioned, the learn module that I created actually walks you through this entire process step by step. And I also provide additional context as to what all the different settings mean. So cannot stress enough, definitely check out the learn module if you want more information on what it is that I'm about to set up and do. The first thing that we're going to do is change the build platform. Navigating to file and build settings, we're going to switch to universal Windows platform. You'll leave all the settings that are on the right side of the screen as is, and from there you'll select switch platform. After the platform has been switched, the next thing that I'm gonna do is come to player settings. And then within player settings, let me move this over. You can scroll down to XR settings. Let me close publishing settings, open XR settings, and then click the button or check the box for virtual reality supported. 
once this is set, there may be some other settings in here that need to be updated, yes. So if you don't have the Windows Mixed Reality SDK selected at this step, the way you can add that is by going to this plus icon here, and then you can choose it from the list of SDKs. That is only going to show up assuming that you have downloaded and did whatever proper configuration or installation that our docs tell you to do. The first thing that needs to happen in here, however, is the depth format needs to be changed to 16-bit depth. You also want to ensure that enable depth buffer sharing is selected. And then for the stereo rendering mode, come to single pass instance. That's going to be what you select there. And then once you've done this part, you can then exit the screen because as you may or may not know in Unity, anything that you have set here in project settings is automatically saved. So there's no save button in here for us to press. And you can also exit the build settings too. In this video, I'm continuing with the series on using the spatial awareness system. For this particular video, however, I'm gonna show you how to import the Mixed Reality Toolkit into Unity. Ready to get started? Let's go. Okay, here's the documentation for the Mixed Reality Toolkit for Unity. There's a great deal of information in here, and this is also where you can find the basic building blocks, which happens to be some documentation that I use often, especially in these videos. The way you want to get the Mixed Reality Toolkit into your Unity project is by using the Mixed Reality Feature Tool. The Mixed Reality Feature Tool contains the various packages that we at Microsoft provide for your Mixed Reality development. And I am going to show you how you can use that tool to import the Mixed Reality Toolkit. Here's the Mixed Reality Feature Tool for Unity. Before you use this, you need to have the Unity project already created and set up. So in the prior step, we set up Unity and we configured for Windows Mixed Reality Development, and now we open up the Mixed Reality Feature Tool for Unity. When this is open, you'll select Start, and then the packages are going to refresh. Once the packages are loaded, we will have a couple different sections to choose packages from. We're going to be looking for the Mixed Reality Toolkit section. Okay, so within the Mixed Reality Toolkit, there are eight different packages here available. All we're gonna need is a foundation package, given that that's the only required one to use the toolkit. We also have some different versions available as well. I am gonna stick with 2.5.4, and I'm going to check that one off and then select Get Features. Within the Import Features tab, what we need to do next is select the project path. So that's going to be wherever you have the project stored on your computer. Once you've selected that, you can select import, you'll review and approve, and then select approve. From there, you'll have the prompt that shows that it, the project has been updated and you can return to Unity. From here, you'll select exit. And at the top of our menu in Unity, you will see that a new section or label, if you will, has been added for the Mixed Reality Toolkit. You can select that and then select Add to Scene and Configure. And then that adds the Mixed Reality Toolkit in the play space to your project. Now, if you're familiar with Unity, but not necessarily utilizing the Mixed Reality Toolkit, you may be wondering where the camera has gone. It's going to be in the Mixed Reality play space. Nothing that we need to do with that, but that's just a heads up. And what's going to be most important here is to select the Mixed Reality Toolkit object That'll open the inspector here to the right. And let me move this over a bit so we have a bit more room to look at what's happening here. And with the Mixed Reality Toolkit, we have configuration profiles. They're gonna be default profiles with settings that are going to be relatively best for the particular device that you're deploying your experience to. By default, it selects the default Mixed Reality Toolkit configuration profile. Since I'm going to be utilizing a HoloLens 2, I'm going to switch mine to default HoloLens 2 configuration profile. In this video, we're gonna look at the spatial awareness system. 
The spatial awareness system provides real world environmental awareness and mixed reality applications. I'm going to show you how to enable and configure spatial awareness with the mixed reality toolkit. Ready to get started? Let's go. Here's the documentation for spatial awareness. I highly suggest that you take a look at the documentation that's available. There's more context than probably what I'm going to share here in this video. And in addition to that, there are step-by-step -step instructions for getting started with more explanation regarding some of the different settings that you can set in Unity. I'm going to actually walk through each of these steps, but definitely feel free to check out the documentation in case you need a bit more information. So from here, let's switch over into Unity. And within the inspector is where we're going to do the very first step, which is to enable spatial awareness. So have the mixed reality toolkit object selected so that way we have all the different attributes for that open. And then within here, what we need to do is enable spatial awareness within the spatial awareness section of the inspector. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that everything is grayed out and that you're not able to select anything. The reason for that is given that our configuration profiles are not modifiable. I'm not sure if that's a word, but essentially they're not editable. You cannot change any of the settings. So what you can do instead is clone the profiles. And as you clone, that will create a copy of the profile itself. And then from there, the settings will open so that way you can change them. So the first thing I'm going to do is select clone. When this window appears, I can give a new name if I want it to. I'm not gonna rename it here, I'll leave it as is. If you leave it, it'll just uh, prepend new to the beginning of the name. Select clone, and then it cloned my profile. It's odd it jumped, but in any case, it shouldn't have jumped. But here we are, I now have the new profile selected. And then down in spatial awareness, I can select enable spatial awareness system. And then the next thing that needs to happen is that we need to select the spatial awareness system type. So for this one, you will want to select a Microsoft Mixed Reality Toolkit spatial awareness and then select Mixed Reality Spatial Awareness System. It may be set by default already, but that's what you need to select just in case. In this video, I am going to register a spatial observer. Spatial observers are generally platform-specific components that act as a provider for surfacing various types of mesh data from a platform-specific endpoint. In my case, that'll be a HoloLens 2. Ready to get started? Let's go. Here we have the documentation for configuring the mesh observers for a device in this case, since I'm using a HoloLens 2. Refer to this documentation if you want more information on how to do this and more so context around all the different settings that you can select. I'm going to switch back to Unity. In the inspector, still with the Mixed Reality Toolkit object selected and down in the Spatial Awareness section. So far, we've cloned the prior profile to enable Spatial Awareness system. And now what needs to happen is that we need to clone this default mixed reality spatial awareness system profile so that we can modify some of the settings down here within the spatial awareness system settings, more so to modify the spatial mesh observer that's in here. Selecting clone, clone again, that's now cloned it. And I now have access to this Windows mixed reality spatial mesh observer. And as you can see, everything is still grayed out. So as you may have guessed it, we'll need to clone this again and select clone. And now that that has been cloned, the next thing that needs to happen is to ensure that we have the correct type available. There are quite a few, but the Windows Mixed Reality Spatial Mesh Observer is going to be the default one. And that's the one that's going to be used. The rest of the settings here do not need to be changed with the exception of one very important setting, which is within the display settings. So first and foremost, let me switch back to the dock. 
So back over in the GitHub pages, we do provide some information on what different display settings that you could use. So starting off, we have three different types. It's going to be none, visible, and occlusion. The first image on the left shows what this will look like on visible. Visible means that the mesh is going to show throughout the entire experience, similar to what you see here within the image. The next option for occlusion means that the mesh data will occlude items in the scene using the occlusion material. And then the final option is going to be the none, which means that no spatial mesh will render at all in the scene. One other thing I want to point out is within docs.microsoft.com, we do have more information regarding spatial mesh, and there's also a nice animation here so you can see what that's going to look like if you decide to display as um, or make it visible as your display option. So as the GIF here shows, if you will, as the observer is looking at the sofa and this uh, laptop table in front of them, the mesh is going to pulsate, if you will, whenever it reaches these objects in the scene. Now within our design guidelines, we do provide more information regarding how the spatial mesh is rendered with the Mixed Reality Toolkit. The default is going to be this wireframe that you can see here in the image. And the thing about the wireframes or more so the mesh material is that it's not something that you want to always have active, if you will, in your scene. It's nice to give the option for your users to disable it. Otherwise, if you keep it open, one thing I will say is it definitely gets in the way. And every so often as you move your head, you're going to see a mesh of the entire environment. So as it states here for debugging purposes, feel free to show it, but for production, pro make sure that you're providing a way for it not to show. Now, the other thing I wanna point out here is that there is a material included with the Mixed Reality Toolkit that's going to give you the animated pulse effect that was shown in the first GIF that I showed on this screen or in this document, if you will. And this particular material can be applied to that display option setting back over in Unity. There are some additional uh, things that you can use this for. So the example given here is that you can have it show at a specific moment of the experience. In addition to that, you can also modify it so that on the user's air tap input that it shows or it hides. I'm going to head back into Unity now and modify that setting for display option and also assign the MRTK surface reconstruction material. Down in display settings for display option, I am going to keep visible here. And then for the visible material, I'll select a dot to get access to all my materials. And let's find that one from earlier. I'm going to make this just a hair bit bigger because I can't read. And instead, I'm going to switch this to text because seeing the images is not my friend. This is going to show all the different materials that come with the Mixed Reality Toolkit. We're looking for the MRTK underscore surface reconstruction. So I can search for that here. There it is. Now that that's been selected, it appears there for a visible material. In this video, I'm going to add objects to my scene. And since I need to actually map my environment before adding these objects to the scene, I am going to also add a button that I'm going to manually press that'll add my objects after I finish mapping my space. Ready to get started? Let's go. The first thing I'm going to do is add in the cube and the sphere. Right click in hierarchy, 3D object cube, and then right click in hierarchy again, 3D object sphere. Notice they're pretty massive here in the scene and we can't see them in the game view for that reason. So selecting both of the objects so that way I can change uh, them for the same setting at the same time. In scale, I'm gonna set that to 0.25. 
y.25 and z.25. So now it's in view. One thing to note here is that for the position, if it's not currently, let me make that zero, if it's not currently set to 0, 0 0.5 for the x, y, and z axis, then you won't be able to see the objects in the game view. That's very important because 0, 0, 0 places the object at origin and guess what else is at origin? your camera. So we can't have the camera and the objects at the same position. One needs to be further out than the other. So in this case, I push the cube and the spear out. The next thing we need to do is to get these objects not sitting within each other. So selecting one of them, in this case, I'll choose the cube and I'm going to move that X axis. Let's see what direction it goes. Move it to the right or to the yeah left. And then the sphere, I'm gonna move that one to the right a bit. Might adjust this one more time so we can see both of them, perfect. The next thing I wanna do now is add a material. Unity, uh, not Unity, but the Mixed Toolkit provides materials that you could utilize for objects. You can search for them by searching for MRTK standard. And if I'm scroll this over so you can see them. Here are, we have some different materials that can be added to these objects. I'm going to make the cube pink and the spear green. So now that I have my materials, I can now add some physics to these objects. Adding physics will add gravity to these objects so that way they will be able to act as we expect them to act in the real world if they weren't holograms. I'm gonna select both again since we're changing the same setting or adding the same component, if you will. In add components, I am going to search for rigid body and collapse this so you can see. There is a setting here for use gravity. Ensure that that is selected. The next thing I need to do now is to add some scripts from MRTK so that way I can manipulate these objects in the real world. Collapsing this again for the sake of viewing, selecting add component and the MRTK script that will enable you to manipulate these objects, if you will, is going to be object manipulator. Object manipulator has some settings that you can modify depending on how you want to be able to manipulate these objects. Starting with the manipulation type, it's currently set to mixed because one-handed and two-handed is selected by default. I only want to be able to pick up these objects with one hand, so I am going to unselect two-handed, so that way I only have one-handed selected. There are some additional settings here that you can modify. I will provide a link to the docs if you wanna learn more about this particular script. But for this example, that's all I'm gonna modify here. The next script that I'm going to add is the near interaction grabbable. That will enable us to interact with objects at a close distance rather than a far distance. There's only one setting for the near interaction grabbable and that's going to be show tether when manipulating. If this is selected, you will have a holographic tether that more or less shoots out or is shown if you are uh, picking up the object. It's actually a great thing to consider to help your, uh, your users know that they have picked up an object. Sound's also a really good thing to consider using as well. I'm not gonna use either in this particular example, but it is something to think about in the future. So now that I have my cube and my sphere set up, the next thing I'm going to do is create a script so that way when the scene starts, it's hidden, and then that will enable me to also create a button press event later on so that way when I press a button, each of the objects appear. I went on ahead and created a scripts folder within uh, the root of my project. The first script that I'm going to create by right clicking and selecting create C sharp script is going to be called scene objects. And from here, I am going to select this script, which will open up Visual Studio. And then once inside Visual Studio, I can start writing some code. So this script is gonna be relatively short. 
as there's not much to add, the first thing that I'm going to do is add in a public game object and I'm going to call that model. The reason why I'm adding this here is that I want to be able to access this over in the editor so that way I can assign an object. Here in the start method, I am going to utilize model and I'm going to set active to false. What this is going to do is hide the objects, if you will, when the scene starts. I don't need this update method here, so I'm going to get rid of it. The next method that I'm going to need is going to be one that I am creating. I am going to call this one show model. And here within the method body, I am going to do the opposite of what I did in the start method. And instead I'm going to set that Boolean value to true. From here, I'll save. Minimize Visual Studio here in Unity, that's compiling and it's all set and ready to go. Because each of these objects will have this script, I'm selecting both. And I'm gonna collapse this so we can see, add component, Search for that script scene objects, select. I'm gonna select only one object at a time, starting with the cube. I am going to collapse all components, open up the scene object script, and I'm gonna drag cube to that model setting. I'm going to also do the same thing for the spear. Collapse all, open up scene objects, drag the spear to the model setting as well. The next thing that I need to do from here is to add in a button so that way the objects will show or hide depending on whether I've selected the button. So the Mixed Reality Toolkit is equipped with some button prefabs that we could utilize as our button so we don't have to create one from scratch, which is awesome. To find the button prefabs, I'm going to go to MRTK here in the projects panel. SDK followed by features, UX, interactable, prefabs, oops, I went to models, let me go back a step, interactable, prefabs, and then I have a list of all the buttons here. I like to use the pressable button HoloLens 2, primarily reason being that that's the device that I am using. I'm gonna add that to my scene by dragging it there. It is currently set to origin, so we won't be able to see it, if we move it back, we can now view it in both the scene view and the game view. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just scale this up to be a two. What I've learned is if I kept it at one, it's a super teeny tiny button. And now that we have that, I can select that button and let me first actually rename it so we don't get confused since I need to create two different buttons. This particular button is going to be called show objects as this will be the button that's used to show the objects in the scene. Over here in the inspector, I also want to change the words that are on here. So let me zoom into it so you can see better. And I need to update Date the setting for the button config helper script, which is a really great script that I think was added. So for the main label text, I want this one to say show objects. And for the say label, it's going to be the same thing. This is super helpful to let your, um, your users know that they can say something I'm not gonna use it in this example, but this is more so just to show you that uh, you could use it. I'm gonna make that shorter to say show. And then from there, I'm gonna change the icon to be a hand to let the user know that they can press that button. I don't know, I think it works. There are some other icon options as well that are available and you could add your own. The next button well, before I get to the next button, let's figure, let's finish configuring this one. So within these buttons, we have some events that we can utilize to add that script to that was just created. For the button pressed event, what I wanna do is add an event 
that will show the objects when the button is pressed. So within button press, I'm going to add a new event here. And then for the object, I'm going to drag the cube starting with that one. And for the function, when I select that, I should be able to access the scene object script because we added that script earlier to the cube itself. And I am going to select show model as the function that's going to happen. I'm going to add one more button press event here, this time dragging the, the spear to be the object that's receiving the event. The function is going to be the same as before to show the model. So because I want both objects to show at the same time, that's why I'm setting it up like this. And if you happen to find a better way to write this script or to make this sort of functionality happen, by all means, go with what you know. In this video, I'm going to add a button that I'll press to hide the spatial mesh after I've mapped my environment. While it's definitely okay to have the spatial mesh visible as you're mapping the space, I want it to be hidden once I'm done so that way when I add my objects to the scene, it's not visible. Ready to get started? Let's go. Since we have one button already set up, what I'm going to do is duplicate that one by doing Control D. And I'm gonna drag that out to the right so that way we can actually see it. I'm gonna zoom in on it. So that way I can see it better. Let's arrange that a little bit. And so for this second button that we've added, this button is going to be used to hide the spatial mesh that we set up earlier when we added or enabled the spatial awareness system. So starting out, I'm going to update the text that shows in the button. Again, that's going to be down in the labels area. This one's gonna say hide mesh. For the say label, I'm gonna make it say hide. In a real world situation, you want these to make sense. In this example, going with something that's a little more simpler. And then for this one, we're going to get rid of these two events that we added for the original button. Again, we duplicated this, so that's why they're both here. Select and click the minus sign for both of them. So the next thing that we need to do is create a script so that way the mesh will hide when the button is pressed. Coming back here into the project panels, I'm gonna head back to that script folder that I created earlier that's holding my scripts. Right click, create, and C Sharp script. I'm going to name this particular script hide mesh. Let that compile so that way we can open it up in Visual Studio. Okay, so that's ready. I'm gonna double click on that so we can open it in Visual Studio. Select Reload if that pop-up shows. Okay, so within Hide Mesh, what I need to do is add a method that's going to hide the mesh if that button's pressed. Fortunately, over in the documentation for the Mixed Reality Toolkit, there is some sample code that's within the section for controlling observers with code. The one that we need to use is showing and hiding the spatial mesh. This particular sample code will enable us to hide the uh, first mesh observer that's available as the comment here states. I'm gonna copy that, head back over to Visual Studio. There we go. And then again, as I mentioned, we're gonna create a method down here for this one. So I'm gonna name it public void hide mesh. And then within the function body, oops, I didn't mean to <laughs> call it hide mesh. That's the same name as script. So let's call it mesh hide. All right, cool. So down within the actual code itself, we have some squiggles and that's because we need to add the proper usings. 
So starting out with the IMX Reality Spatial Awareness Mesh Observer, hover over that and in Visual Studio, we can see some potential fixes. And the first suggestion is to add the using. I wanna select that. That using is going to be Awareness. And now that squiggle is gone, as well as the one that was down below. And you can see at the top that the using has been added. The next thing we need to do is resolve this squiggle for course services. So selecting show potential fixes, we have a using here from Microsoft Mixed Reality Toolkit. Select that, squiggles are gone, the using has been added to the top of the script. So now this particular script is good and ready to go. You could delete the start and update methods if you'd like. Um, I'd say in this case, let's go ahead and get rid of them. We don't need it. And we're gonna click save. Now returning back to Unity, what I need to do is add that script to the button. For the sake of clarity, I'm gonna rename this button to hide mesh, just so things are clear. And then down here in the button events, in the button pressed, we need to add a new one. And before we do that, what I need to do is add an empty game object to hold that script. Right-clicking in Hierarchy, selecting Create Empty, I'm going to name this one Mesh Script. And then going to Add Component, I'm gonna look for that script that I just created, which is Hide Mesh. And now the script's been added. Heading back to the button for Hide Mesh, in the Events for Button Press, I'm gonna add the new one. I'm gonna have the Mesh Script be the receiver. And the function is within hide mesh, and that one's going to be mesh hide. So that's it for the objects that need to be added to the scene. The next thing is going to be the demo. Now in this video, I am going to demo what was created over the series of this project. First, I am going to map my environment with spatial mesh visible. And then once I'm done, I'm going to press a button to hide it. And then I'll press another button to bring my objects into my real world environment. And thanks to spatial awareness, those objects are going to interact with my actual real world items in the room. So ready to get started? Let's go. Here's the app that I deployed to my device. In front of me, I have buttons show objects and hide mesh. And as I look around, the mesh is going to map all the surfaces in my environment. Okay, so now when I press hide mesh, all the mesh should hide. And then when I select show objects, I should have a cube and a sphere. There they are. Okay, so this sphere is rolling because it's round. Drop it over there. I pick up this cube. Oops, I dropped it. I should be able to sit it on that ledge. Blossa, oh, the spear. It's rolling towards my package. I can sit that in the corner. It's so cool, it hits everything. And hopefully I map this side, yep. And if I take this back, sit it next to it, it hits it. So that's how it works. It just knock the cube on its side. Okay. And because I didn't constrain whether I can scale these, I should be able to make this bigger. Nope, I didn't. I can throw. <laughs> so cool. And that wraps up this project. If you would like to get started creating your own mixed reality experiences, check out the links below in the description. If you have any comments or if you would like to see something covered within the Made with MRTK video series, either leave a comment below or come find me on Twitter. Subscribe so that way you're notified of new videos and until next time, see you later.